Hey, good morning, everyone. Thank you guys for hanging out with us again for another devotion. This morning, I want to talk to you about the potential dangers around isolation. Now, I know God has given us different personalities, and some of us were more introverted, where uh, we recharge or refuel when we're alone. Some of us were more extroverted. We recharge when we're around people, man. That's when we come alive. Myself, personally, I would classify myself as a high functioning introvert, meaning I love being around people. I love people, seeing people at church, in the foyer, uh, around the community. I love my life group. Uh, I love our staff. I love hanging out around people, but I have a social gas tank, if you will. And as that tank gets empty, then I, I need to kind of be by myself. I just need to recharge. And so I'm not necessarily talking about the need from time to time to be alone. You may say it's the difference between seeking purposeful solitude versus isolation. And I do think the difference between those two has a lot to do with motive. What's the purpose or the reason for being alone? I found some scriptures that talks about some of the potential pitfalls of isolation. From the very beginning, honestly, God set this up. Even in Genesis, the Lord God said in Genesis 2.18, it's not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Ecclesiastes 4.9, two people are better off than one for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Again, in Ecclesiastes 4.12, a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. So even there, that, that's talking about being attacked. And we're not necessarily talking about walking down the street and somebody trying to jump you, but we do have an adversary, the enemy. He loves to get people isolated. And because when we're isolated, we're very vulnerable. And I will say that over the course of the last few months, this last year, and certainly over the course of the ministry that I've participated in, the people that have struggled the most, I would say the people, honestly, that have gotten the most off in their thinking, even weird in their thinking, have been people that have a tendency to isolate, to be by themselves, to get alone for too long without intentional purpose other than not wanting to be around people. As I look at the Word of God, a lot of people in the Word, strong people, when they got alone, they typically struggled. I think about the greatest example that we have, and that's Jesus. There was a time when Jesus allowed himself to be isolated. In Matthew chapter 4, this is right after Jesus is baptized, the beginning of that chapter says, And then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Now, everything that Jesus did throughout the work, it was always for a couple of different reasons or purposes. One reason was to fulfill prophecy. Another reason was always just to be obedient to his father, to bring glory to him so that people could be healed and restored. But a major reason why Jesus did everything that he did was to set an example for us. And that's exactly what we find in Matthew chapter four. We know that Jesus is perfect. He is God in the flesh. And so there was no real reason for him to fast, especially for 40 days. But what is happening during that time? What's happening during that time is Jesus is becoming weak. He's becoming weak physically, certainly, but he's also becoming weak emotionally, spiritually, and socially. And I want you to remember what happened at the end of those 40 days, at the end of those 40 days when Jesus is at his weakest. Okay, so Jesus is presenting himself in a place of weakness, but without sinning. A lot of times we put ourselves in places of weakness because of choices that we make. Wrong choices because of sin. 
But Jesus, he's putting himself in a place of weakness and then the enemy comes to tempt him. So I think it's amazing that Jesus even showed us that when you isolate, you make yourself vulnerable to the enemy, to the attacks of the enemy. Here's the thing, you need people and people need you. God has created in you a unique purpose, a design that is meant for his glory to help build his kingdom. Recently, I saw someone post about how God had just kept pulling them out of a ditch, pulling them out of these deep places in their life. That God had been so faithful in doing that. But what I don't know that they realize is the reason why God is doing that, not just so they can be okay, but because God has a greater purpose in that. And it's first and foremost that they would know how much he loves them, that he loves being around them. He's crazy about them. But God also has put something in them that others need. So back to the motive. The word says this in Philippians 2, 3 through 4. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. In Proverbs 18, 1, this is strong. One who has isolated himself seeks his own desires. He rejects all sound judgment. So there are times that you can seek solitude to get with the Lord to be refilled. Jesus did that all the time, but why did he do it? He did it because he needed to connect to the Father because he recognized that he could not give what he did not have. It was in connecting with the Father that he created this overflow that allowed him to do ministry. But it was never just about himself alone. It was also about what he could give to others. So maybe you've been in a season of isolation I just encourage you to pray. Ask the Lord to seek your heart. What's the motive behind that isolation? Why are you doing that? But then I'd also encourage you that as he speaks to you, you recognize God has something more inside of you that he wants to do in you, but also through you in the lives of other people. We need people. God created you physically, chemically, emotionally and spiritually to need to be around people. Let me pray for you. Lord, thank you. Thank you that you've created the body, the body of Christ, each of us fulfilling a unique purpose and part of that body. I pray that every person that's listening right now would be encouraged. Lord, that they would seek the potential enemy's lies and, and his design and plan to try to pull them away and to get them isolated and into their own thoughts and into their own motives that can be driven by fear and insecurity and pride. Lord, I pray that they would see those things and stand on the truth of your word and stand on the truth of who they are in you. Lord, that they would find themselves in devotion to you, filled up so that they can know who they are as your sons and daughters so that they can pour out again into people who need them. I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed, church. Love you.